Hello everyone and welcome back to The Sims 3, The North Star Legacy. And we are here with something very, very special that one of our legacy spares, Zelda, and her husband Wyatt are about to start. And that is, are you guys ready for this? The Unicorn Challenge. So after being asked from you guys for so, so long to start with the Unicorn Challenge, we are going to be doing it. And you guys may be going, but Siri, what the heck is the Unicorn Challenge? Who is that puppy? Why do they have wings? Where where the heck are we? Why is the puppy growling at Wyatt? Oh my gosh. Biscuit, behave yourself. We're still doing introductions. <laughs> but welcome everyone. So yes, we are finally doing the unicorn challenge. What the unicorn challenge is, ignore Wyatt's cranky face right there, is inviting a unicorn into our family. So befriending a unicorn, having them move into the family, and then trying to breed up at least 50 unicorns. The unicorn challenge is kind of like an elevated Sims 3 50 full challenge, sort of like the 100 puppies challenge or 100 cats challenge that you might happen, 100 kittens that you might have uh, for some of the other animal related challenges in Sims 3. And I have been asked for a very long time by you guys to potentially do one with unicorns and one with horses. So we are going to be doing the unicorn challenge and maybe adding in some special new rules as we go. But I figure just starting from the beginning of trying to befriend a unicorn is a good place to start. So let me go go ahead and introduce the sims that we are going to be using for the challenge. Like I just said, we have actually gotten to know these sims before. Just a lot of you guys have probably never heard of them. So this is Zelda Northstar, and she is actually the child, the first child of Darien Northstar from the Northstar Legacy. We have two seasons to the Northstar Legacy. Season two just kind of trickled off, and I've always meant to go back to them. And I've always wanted to come back to Zelda, because the Northstar family is actually the very first family I ever played with in Sims 3. Oh my goodness, we're reaching back into the ancient years of being Siri Sims. Oh my gosh. And Zelda was a little fairy foundling that we actually made. And her father is Darien, the son of a witch. And he is married to her new mother. So not her genetically related mother. She's not genetically related to either Darien or to Gina. But she uh, has a stepmother named Gina. And so Gina married her father. And they have many, many, many mythological children. They've got plant sim children. They have witch children. They've got, um, let's see, a on the way to becoming a vampire child who is the clone of Mortimer Goth and basically an amazing set of legacy stories behind them. So if you guys want to go and know where Zelda has come from and watch her grow up and watch her become the beautiful rebellious fairy that we know her to be and watch her as she meets Wyatt and ends up getting married to Wyatt, then you definitely need to check out season one and two of the North Star family. It was so much fun to be with them, and I am so excited to be back with them again now. So what we're going to be doing with our wonderful Zelda is actually starting her own fairy forest. So Zelda Northstar was raised by Darien Northstar. We will go and meet him in a little bit. And he is actually a famous, very rich witch who lives in the area. And he is married to Gina, who is actually a fairy mad scientist. Gina, even though she is a fairy, believes deeply in the power of science and logic. And Darien is actually a technophobe who dislikes everything about science, basically. So they're married is a little bit of an interesting one. They deeply love each other, but they have this constant conflict between science and traditional magic. So kind of like your more modern magic and your more traditional magic that has really shaped their family and it's kind of controlling what happens with their other children. Zelda was actually found by Darien when she was just a little baby as a fairy foundling in a forest. And that was back when he was studying inside of the forest, studying the very traditional ways of using witchcraft. And so he raised her all by himself for many years and when she turned into a child and got child age he realized that maybe he kind of needed to move out of his reclusive hut in the forest and find a new home to be able to share with Zelda where she could probably get some proper schooling. So the family came back when it was just Zelda and Darien and they moved here to Sleepy Hollows. So or I think this is like the uh, Sleepy Haunted Woods something like that. I, we're just going to go ahead and call it Sleepy Hollows because it works out so well. But they moved here here. And this is an amazing town. This is a custom world that I downloaded. I think it's called, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called Sleepy Hollows actually. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I really love it. It is basically a all expansion packs included um, fantasy, sci-fi, 
uh, Horror Story Mixed Town. You can find Mr. Thing. You can find like Smuggler's Cove, a tiny pond, uh, the Plumbug Pictures back lot. There is the, there used to be an insane asylum down here that actually moved over here instead. And that is the old asylum right over here. We've got the Goth family. The Goth family actually lives here somewhere. And we also have the Scooby-Doo crew. So the Scooby-Doo crew actually lives over here. I think they live over... Why is there just one baby there? Oh, she's the only one who's like currently in residence. I gotcha, I gotcha. So yeah, there's so many characters from a whole bunch of the books. So there's uh, like uh, horror story writers are in here. We have a whole bunch of characters from uh, like creepy horror movies who have been turned into Sims and added in. And we started with all of them and I have Inras. So it's been really fun to see like towny progression and it's just kind of amazing to be like, oh my gosh, uh, like they're like, the Scooby-Doo crew has gotten married and divorced and they like Shaggy ended up moving in with with Mr. Thing and uh, I think that Scooby ended up having puppies with some of the local town animals and I definitely want to keep populating the town with all sorts of those kinds of storied creatures so we can go through and find like Dracula and we can add in characters like that as time goes on because it adds in a fun little fantasy twist and some of our other fantasy favorites we can put in here too. So it's a really amazing town. And this is where Zelda and her father moved in. And so Darian did a great job of moving her into a magic friendly town. This is a supernatural friendly town where the supernatural creatures really are able to find their own home and become very comfortable. But that doesn't mean they kind of get along all the time. You have your zombie factions and your werewolf factions and of course you end up with Darien being um, being the witch that he is. They actually have a mummy uh, nanny by the way. So they do have a mummy nanny and the baby that's currently in the North Star family happens to be the clone of Mortimer Goth that Gina created so that she can do some experiments with Darien's vampire potions when he comes uh, to be a little bit older. So yeah, there's a lot of really fun things going on in here from two whole seasons already but I'm really looking forward to adding in even more of the supernatural creatures from some of our favorite shows and maybe even some references from some of our favorite things on YouTube and some of our other favorite games so that should be really really fun but Zelda is a little rebel so her father moved here ended up finding love and starting a bigger family and a nice little quaint house they have a pretty normal looking house to be completely honest also her father has a familiar he has his familiar cat uh, Soot and and Soot has a mate now and Soot has a, a kitten even. So we ended up playing with all of those things over here. And there's even like a cow plant in the backyard. Here is Zelda's stepmother. Here is her half sister, Ariel. Uh, well, actually, the, you know, she's not actually related, related to Darian. So her sister, Ariel, basically. And a whole bunch of the rare things that they grow in the garden, including a whole bunch of the fairy mushrooms, the little ring of fairy mushrooms. And she's got more siblings. We'll visit them another day. But, you know, Darian has made a good name for himself. He has made a very comfortable home and he is well known in town for being the alchemist of the whole town. He has very, very uh, wonderful skills in traditional magics and he is very highly regarded as one of the lead witches in the entire area. And he's also very rich because he has used his alchemal, like his uh, alchemy skills and his Midas touch once we accidentally turned him into an actual statue, the Midas statue, and he ended up selling the Midas statue and becoming extremely rich. And what he decided he wanted to do was have a complete monopoly over all of the alchemy stores in town. So he bought out all of the alchemy stores and he is now the most important alchemist in town and he started to gain a bit of a reputation. So he's building up his celebrity level and he's actually starting to become a political figure in town for the supernatural factions that he leads with traditional witchcraft. And that's pretty intense. So he's actually starting to start a few fights among other groups, other supernatural groups in town who want to see the witchcraft and they, they want to see more modern interpretations of things. And even his wife Gina doesn't entirely agree with him on how the politics of being a supernatural creature should go. And also his daughter Zelda takes it to a different extreme. So where Gina might want to see things go towards science and opening up some new areas, like maybe inviting aliens in to be considered part of the supernatural members of the town. And 
Nadarian wants to really see like a traditional witch school established and the traditional witch bloodlines kept a little bit more more preserved. Then you have Zelda. So Zelda, ha she's not genetically related to anybody in her family. And as she's gotten older, she's really embraced her fairy side. And that's going to be what we're going to make the entire focus of the unicorn challenge. Don't worry, there's going to be a unicorn all about. So Zelda has decided to embrace, embrace her rebellious side and embrace the fact that she really loves unicorns and she loves supernatural animals basically. She is pretty jaded from all of the people in town and she believes that they're way too materialistic. They're just way too obsessed with too much destruction and pollution and they're not really actually taking care of any of the supernatural things that they need to be doing. They're they're just destroying the forest and what about like the, the wild fairies who don't want to take on human form? How are they going to endure with all of this development? And even her father wants to do more building to be able to put in like new schools for the witches and put in new shops for his potion shop and she doesn't even agree with that so what zelda wants to do and what the main thrust of our challenge is going to be is create a haven for the magical creatures and some of the other fairies a whole fairy commune here in sleepy hollows and so that's going to be zelda's big project is making this land safe for the wild magical creatures again and that includes finding and befriending the unicorn that is somewhere out there in the world and inviting it into our household and helping the unicorn to have as many children as possible and making it safe for the unicorn and its children to be able to take over the forest again. Of course, there's not much of a forest to take over. So one of Zelda's goals for this entire unicorn challenge is going to be buying up all of the lots around her and spreading this tiny itty bitty little fairy forest that she has started here on this itty bitty lot throughout the world. So she is going to start trying to snatch up and buy a whole bunch of the lots that are in the world and turn them into forests like this and make it a very comfortable place for the unicorns to live. So we need, she has a very, very small place to live right now, by the way. So if we're thinking about getting a unicorn, yeah, she's going to have to be able to have a bigger lot. So she has to do things, probably lead the rebellious protest and steal from the dumpster like she really loves to do to earn enough money. Ironically, even though she is very, very heavily a rebel, she she's a rebel who's a supernatural fan, loves the outdoors. She's family oriented. So let's go ahead and have her talk with her husband for just a second. Complain about the status quo and then we'll have her chat with him for a little bit. Uh, and while we're kind of explaining everything, it won't be much longer. But she is a supernatural fan who is rebellious, loves the outdoors, she's family oriented, and she's lucky. So Zelda, even though she kind of wants to start this fairy commune out in the middle of the forest and start creating an enchanted forest and doing that by not only planting trees and bushes, but also growing some of the really rare things like life fruit, growing omni things and putting magical instruments in them, being able to grow grow the flame fruit, maybe some of the plasma fruit. All of those magical plants are things that Zelda needs to start actually growing. We'll go ahead and let's have her, let's have her, let's see, do something. Brag about wing color. Well, let's have them brag about wing color. Oh, look at them fly. Oh, it's so cute when they do that. And as you can see, they are both fairies. Oh, that's so cute. So yes, they're going to build a fairy commune here. And Wyatt is right on board. And yes, so what we're going to do is Zelda not only has to bring in the unicorn, but she also needs to plant a whole bunch of the magical related plants that are in the world. I don't know what her gardening skill is at right now. Um, She did have to help out a lot in the garden. So her gardening skill right now is at level six, but it'll need to be higher if we're going to be able to plant some of the mythical plants. So I think we'll probably need to plant at least one life fruit, one flame fruit, uh, one of some of the other fruits, and maybe even get a cow plant since you have to have balance to the whole ecosystem and even get a cow plant that we add into the world in order to make like one lot a enchanted forest. And once we have an enchanted forest, then we can say that it is safe for the unicorns to move in because unicorns are pretty picky. They're going to need an enchanted forest to move into and live in. They can't just move into any old forest or else they just like show up in your backyard. That's not how unicorns work. So Zelda needs to turn this area into a little enchanted forest. And what she did is she kind of uh, made some, uh, some mistakes. Zelda ended up donating all of her money. And let's see, I don't want her to do too many fairy tricks on her husband. That's, that would be kind of annoying. Um, let's have her tell an inside joke. 
And then maybe, uh, oh, where is my money? Is this mummy is a song that she could learn from him because they have done a little bit of traveling. So we'll let them kind of play together for a moment because they're very playful. That's the other thing. Fairies are easily distracted. So we'll have to see how we can work out things for poor Zelda because she is probably going to be very distracted along their quest to do all of these different things. And she is going to have to earn money in order to be able to buy the lots. That's the other thing I was explaining about her rebellious nature is she's going to have to sort of swallow her pride and she's going to have to figure out ways to earn enough money to buy other lots so that they can expand their enchanted forest because not even she can fight against the laws that say that they they can't move and just like take over this area and that's just that's the problem of the man so we're going to have her go ahead and have to work to gather enough money she has very little bit of money right now she actually got scammed donating to what she thought was like a real rebel cause and it was such a rebel cause that it turned out to be criminal because they just took her money and like left and so Zelda lost all of the money and the home that she and Wyatt and Biscuit, their dog, lived in. And now they're living out here in the forest. And at first, Zelda was like, oh, this will be fine. There's a little like cave over here that's warm for Biscuit. We've got him a little rope ball. I've got him a food dish. I mean, they can live in their fairy house so they can actually have a huge majority of their needs taken care of inside of this little fairy castle. So she's really quite adamant about using the fairy castle because it's small and it doesn't really hurt the environment very much so Zelda's very happy about that and then we've also got a little uh, all-in-one bathroom that we're going to pretend is like a little cave they can go in and they can actually come over here and that will take care of all of their hygiene and bladder needs at once and then they can take care of their hunger either by going in and drinking fairy pollen inside of their little fairy castle or by coming over and starting a fire at the fire pit or she can go and try to steal some food from some of the many many shops in town so so Zelda wants to see all of these old buildings and all of these like run down like barns and everything start being torn down and turned into things that will be a nice forest for the unicorn. So she wants to tear all this down, plant a bunch of trees and magical plants and create a enchanted forest for the unicorn. So that's her goal. And thankfully her husband Wyatt, who has always kind of been very enchanted by her, is totally on board. So well, Wyatt is actually still kind of coping with the fact that he is now a fairy. He didn't used to be a fairy. He used to be just a normal teenage boy kind of bumbling along in life, kind of brought in from his dad's job to be in Sleepy Hollow and going to high school with Zelda. And one day he was over and he ended up messing around in Zelda's father's attic where he kept all of his magic potions that he made when uh, from being a witch. And Wyatt got turned into a fairy. And it turns out to be a really perfect thing because then he and Zelda can live very long lives together. Fairies live obscenely long. He, oh, he has the thousand days before he ages up, you guys. Uh, and she has 998. Basically, they're going to live long enough to see the unicorn challenge all the way through to 50 unicorn foals, I'm sure. So we're going to see what kind of adventures we're going to get up with these two. Wyatt is still trying to cope with the idea that he even is a fairy. So he's still in shock. And I'm going to say that often his mind is easily distracted. He's exceptionally playful. He really tends to tell funny stories and get very, very distracted quite often. Dare people to do things, do fairy tricks. He can't really contain his overabundance of fairy very hyperness just yet because he's just a fairy he just turned into a fairy the poor man's mind has been addled so much and he's also trying to cope when he's not being extremely goofy with the fact that he's going to live for an extremely long time and he doesn't know what to do about that oh and look he got a little bit of rebel skill wonderful and he doesn't know what to do about the fact that he's going to live for a super super long time so his new lifetime wish is actually descendant of da vinci so he's going to become a a jack of all trades, but a master of none. But your sin proves there can be exceptions. A brilliant artist with an eye for painting, the dexterity for sculpting, and the genius for inventing. No endeavor is out of reach. <laughs> To such a multi-talented individual, shun the offerings of the outside world and instead spend days contemplating the canvas and the night's wooing images buried deep in stone. Why leave just one legacy when you can leave behind dozens? Master the inventing skill, uh, master the painting skill, and master the sculpting skills. So Wyatt's going to actually kind of, uh, when he interacts with other people right now, he's going to be really confused and kind of just funny all the time or pulling pranks inappropriately because he's still coping with the fact that he 
he has a fairy body and a fairy mind now. And that makes somebody very, very hyper. That makes them really kind of over the top with just pulling tricks and giving fairy dust out. Can he do anything special? Fairy. Tell a fairy tale. And oh, and so yeah, he's just going to be really focused on the playful side of being a fairy. But when he's alone and he has some time to breathe, then he's going to be working on those skills so that he can try to contemplate something deeper in life. And he's going to be looking into art and creating art in order to try to answer those deeper questions for himself. Meanwhile, Zelda is going to be going around looking for the fairy tale finder lifetime wish, which is why settle for a regular pet when you can have one of the most in. in enigmatic, charismatic, and mythical animals to ever exist. The sheer presence of a unicorn inspires the aura of tranquility and mysticism. Not many Sims can say they've seen one, let alone have one be part of the family. So if you ever come across one, it'll be worth your while to make that unicorn a member of your family. So adopt a unicorn! So that is the first of the goals that Zelda now has. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I'm being able to work with them to make the enchanted forest to see how their little family because they are a newly married couple who knows who knows when i'm going to end up with little fairy babies rolling around i don't think that they're even thinking about that just yet but who knows when it might start showing up inside of their wants uh and because zelda wants to be like really living off the land we're gonna have to go into town anytime she wants to do things like write a science fiction novel uh, she does want to harvest a wild plant she wants to buy a telescope we'll have to figure out if those are things that would be appropriate for her lot or not or if there are things that we should have her just go and borrow the telescope at her family's house if she wants to actually use it i think she's the kind of rebel who will say one thing and she'll kind of like rail against the man but she's not above going over and borrowing her mom and dad's laundry machine if she really needs to so that's what she is and then we're also going to work on building up her celebrity so we want to get her celebrity status up to level five so that she can have the political maneuvering to be able to make her enchanted forest and maybe even help pass a few new laws. So that's going to be a little bit interesting to try to build her celebrity status up so that she can try to uh, champion her cause that way. And we're also going to try to build up her rebel skill to be as high as it can be. I'm not sure how high rebel skills can be because I've actually never really looked at them or used them before. So we're going to be exploring certain things about the game that I haven't even really touched before while we are playing with the unicorn challenge, including horses. So we actually need to get horses we need to have the equestrian riding skill, I think, before you can even invite the unicorn. There's really strict requirements to adopting a unicorn. And I think we have to be like master riders before we can even be able to invite the unicorn into our family. So that's going to be really fun. And we have to take care of Biscuit. And I'm thinking we might have a few of like the minor pets. We might catch some minor pets. Uh, we might like release them or we might set up little enclosures for them. So it can seem like the enchanted forest has a whole bunch of animals living in it. I think it's going to be really, really fun. And I'm sorry that this has mostly been a talky episode to set it up just so that you guys can get to know Zelda Wyatt. Biscuit is an aggressive, clueless, piggy, cranky ball of fluff who apparently already has a mate uh, named Marina who is kind of curious and I don't even know about her. And I think we're gonna have a great time so you guys that's kind of the basic premise of the unicorn challenge but there is one more twist i need to introduce to you so remember how i said one of the goals is that they're going to have to start earning and saving enough money to be able to buy up these lots well there is another force in town another force who wants to start buying up these lots and doing something else with them entirely and no it's not actually darian he's busy being distracted with all sorts of other laws and regulations and the have nothing to do with what they're actually working on over here. The other force happens to be, and I think she's actually missing at the moment. Is she over here? I don't think she's here right now. Yeah, she's hiding inside of the Usher household, but I'll have to introduce you guys another time to Miss Swampire. So there is a very rich heiress to the Thing Corporation from the Thing from the Swamp. That was her her father, thank you very much, and Esmelda Swampire, daughter of the Thing, who has inherited the rich fortunes of the Thing Empire, uh, is going to move in, and she has 
has already bought out the usher's house, this gigantic house on the hill, and she has moved in with her beautiful white cat, Miss Precious Darling. That's actually the cat's name is Miss Precious Darling. You might see her wandering around town. And they are going to start buying up lots in town and transforming them into the kind of swampy, polluted factories that the Thing family absolutely adore. After all, she is from the swamp. She is a thing from the swamp. That's what her people are. And so she wants to start buying up like these little resorts and these beach lots and some of the houses and transforming them into polluted little places that are going to be absolutely full of muck and nastiness and only the kinds of places where the Thing family would really consider a exclusive resort sort of swamp to be able to go to. That would be very inhospitable to pretty much all of the other creatures except maybe the zombies. So Zelda doesn't know that they're, that even though she's this quiet little fairy rubble living like it, literally just in a rock castle right now that's the size of like a child's dollhouse, she has no idea that a very rich, um, very rich heiress has moved in with plans to change this town. And what we will be doing in the future after we kind of get our feet under ourselves with Zelda and Wyatt and their challenge with befriending horses and getting unicorns is we will start assigning values to the different lots that are in town. And what we'll do is we will roll every time we play to see just how much more money Miss Thing has gotten from all of her various businesses. And if she hits the amount of money required to buy up a lot before Zelda does, then she gets that lot and it will have a huge modifier added for how much it will cost if Zelda wants to be able to buy it away from her. Or we can host a political rally if Zelda has enough of her celebrity fame and enough of her rebel skill and we can try to challenge Miss Thing in a rally to see if we're able to snatch the land away from her. So it's going to be a battle between the Swampire Empire Corporation and their swamps, their polluted swamps they want to put in, and Zelda, who wants to expand and make a whole bunch of enchanted forests along the edge of town. And it may even, as time goes on, we may even start to poke inside of town, and then we may even find that Zelda ends up having competition from her family, because I don't think the North Star would approve if she wanted to start bulldozing the school, for instance, and putting down forest instead. And Zelda is kind of that extreme at the moment. So we'll have to see if she makes some friends. She doesn't really have any friends. It's just her and Wyatt. And when she's just kind of caught up in her identity as a fairy rebel, then all she's thinking about is the good of fairies and the good of the animals. But she's kind of forgotten to think about the good of the other supernatural creatures in town. So we're going to have to see if she makes any friends or if she just digs into that and she does really actually end up buying and bulldozing the school. So we're going to have to see how that works out. Thank you guys so much for <laughs> your patience while we kind of do this prologue episode of explaining the backstories of what's going to be happening in Sleepy Hollow Town. And I really am looking forward to enjoying just sitting back and enjoying Zelda and Wyatt's life together with you guys. So I will see you guys next time when we will hopefully be able to go out and find some horses or at least go and start to increase our equestrian skill. We're at the very least start to be able to gather up a little bit of money because right now there we couldn't even feed a horse if we had one and i will see you guys then bye bye